One, two, and three. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. Hi guys, Dr. Daphne Lim. Uh, today we'll be talking about the most frequently Google skincare questions. So here we go. How to treat oily skin. Oil, as you know, is a natural, I guess, process for which we, our skin produces to actually lubricate our skin. Without oil, your skin will be a disaster. It'll be dry, and it'll be flaky, and that's really bad. So oil production is natural, but too much oil will give you a greasy look, which no one likes. First thing to do is actually use a cleanser, but you don't use a harsh cleanser to use actually a gentle cleanser. So cleanse twice a day. Most importantly, it's important to moisturize. Why do you ask? Why do you moisturize when it's actually oily? Well, the reason being is that your skin has what's known as a biofeedback loop. So the more oil you have and the more oil you remove, the skin actually produces more oil. So what you want to do is you want to trick it to use uh, to actually produce less oil, and that's when you use a moisturizer twice a day. So use a non-comedogenic moisturizer, a non-clogging moisturizer. And that same that applies to your makeup as well. Okay, what about blotting paper? Blotting paper can be used, but you have to use it very gently and not too much. But once again, if you remove too much oil, your skin produces more oil. So the whole idea is to get things in the balance. What can we do medically? Well, there's lots of things we can do medically. We can actually decrease the production of oil using vitamin A's. And the vitamin A's can be prescribed vitamin A, vitamin A's called retinoid. Or your dermatologist can easily prescribe um, vitamin A orally. So that can certainly help. Additionally, anti-hormone medications can help. So speak to your dermatologist in regards to how to treat oily skin. Guys, how do you treat blackheads? That's one of the most common questions we get. Um, blackheads are basically due to overproduction of uh, oil, but not only that, when you have cells in your, what's known as pilosebaceous units, shed, it can cause what's known as a closed comedone, which is a whitehead, or an open comedone, which is a blackhead. Same principles apply. If you're trying to treat blackheads, what you want to do is use um, a scrub, but you don't want to scrub too much, so you want to gently exfoliate. You can use that using physical exfoliants, like mitts, or even a physical exfoliator, but most dermatologists prefer chemical exfoliators, and by that we're talking about acids. So chemical peels, for example, alpha hydroxy acids, uh, including glycolic acid, lactic acid, and salicylic acid can all help reduce blackheads. In my opinion, the one that does best is something called salicylic acid. Why? Because salicylic acid is lipophilic, so it actually goes into the oil glands. The other thing as well with um, salicylic acid is that it is anti-inflammatory. So start off with something like 2% salicylic acid wash and use that twice a day as tolerated. What other things can we try? Vitamin A's, because vitamin A's actually help with the differentiation of your skin cells within the pilosebaceous units. So retinoids, once again, you can start off as prescribed, so you can start off with over-the-counter retinoids, or dermatologists will prescribe you things like first-generation retinoids, tretinoin, second-generation retinoids such as adapalene, or third-generation retinoids such as tazarotene, or we can mix it all up and also add salicylic acid. But once again, slow in, fast out. Start very slowly and then add things when you tolerate that. Okay, so that's blackheads. Last of all, as you know, with the pimple popping craze, physical methods, including comedone extractors, um, can actually help with blackheads. So whatever you do, don't squeeze. Try your chemical um, methods first, and then certainly physical methods using proper comedone extractors. How do you get rid of dark circles? So well, I've done nearly 180 videos, but I've kind of avoided this because dark circles is a minefield. Um, as a dermatologist, we get asked that, I get asked that at least three, four times a day. The majority of dark circles is due to many factors, including constitutional, in other words, race related. If it's race related, it's almost impossible to change genetics, yeah? But if the dark circle is secondary to things like skin irritation, whether it be an allergic contact dermatitis or more frequently an irritant contact dermatitis, or even things like atopic dermatitis when you're rubbing, certainly treating the cause of the dark circle will give you a good improvement. The other way we can treat dark circles is to actually use um, bleaching creams. But because your eye area is so sensitive, 
The bleaching creams have to be very, very gentle. So when we're talking things like hydroquinone, it can't be the traditional 4 or 5% and you certainly can't use triluma. You shouldn't use triluma around your eye area because of your hydrocortisone. But uh, we can compound things like 2% hydroquinone, you can add things like litera, and there are many other methods to decrease the amount of pigment. The other thing which I find very useful are lasers. Once again, it's not a fail-safe, so it doesn't mean that every patient that comes in with dark circles is a laser candidate. But if they have pigmentation which is in excess, things like Q-switch lasers, Pico lasers, clear and brilliant, gentle lasers around the eye area can actually help. And once again, it's a very fine tipping point. If you do harsh lasers, you can actually go the other way around and you get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Finally, it's volume. So you'll hear me talking about texture, tone, volume. In this situation, we're talking about volume around the eyes. And using a nice, fluid, hyaluronic acid base can actually help. Can PRP help? Yes, but the results, in my opinion, aren't as good as um, hyaluronic acid fillers. Once again, a very difficult, I guess, uh, treatment to say what is the best. You do need an examination together with a full history before a tailored program can be given to you. How can you reduce pore sizing? Realistically, that's the second most commonly asked question I get on a daily basis. So pores can be genetic, or pores can be medical, or pores can be a combination between genes and medical conditions. So once again, enlarged pores can be seen in patients um, who are often ethnic in origin, but also in patients who have excess oil production. And to identify the cause of the enlarged pore, that is the trick, yeah? Because once you actually get the diagnosis, you can aim treatments directed at that. So with pore sizing, we can approach things medically. So once again, with your retinoids, your vitamin A's, either orally or uh, preferably skin. So you're talking about uh, tretinoin, adapalene, or tazaritine, or a mixture of those three. So that's the first thing, vitamin A. Glycolic acid can help. Um, the other thing which I do a lot nowadays is to actually use microbotox. The reason why microbotox works is because you, it's called mesobotox, by the way. So you're in, not injecting botox into the actual muscles. You're injecting it into the dermis or just the subdermal layer. If you use botox, we can actually target the oil gland, which is called your sebaceous gland. You can target the eccrine gland, which also produces sweat. And you can also target the muscles, which contract and also give you enlarged pores. So by targeting all of those using microbotox, it can make a significant difference with minimal downtime and side effects. Certainly there are pros and cons with microbotox. Um, the pros, simple, effective, no downtime, very little risk. The cons, it only lasts three to six months. So if you want a more permanent fix, things like lasers can help. So the laser of choice which I like to do is something called Q-switching or Pico lasers. And we use a laser with a very short pulse duration to go right down into the dermis, stimulate collagen, and that provides contraction of the pores. So with laser treatment, it is much slower compared to Botox. So we expect changes in about 10 to 12 weeks, but the effects last a lot longer, possibly even years. Other lasers which I like using include Fraxel, called Fraxel 1927, and I like using it at a high density. The other wavelength which I like is 1927, diode-driven, not thulium-driven, diode-driven, using the clear and brilliant. That works brilliantly to reduce pores. Certainly all the other lasers, including erbium lasers, CO2 lasers, ablative lasers, yes, they can reduce pore sizing, but once again, they're much, much um, longer downtime and more complex to perform. So for pore sizing, always try to match the skin type uh, of the patient, right? the pore size and your actual treatment, and that's where you get good results. At what age should you start skincare? <laughs> well, as early as possible. So I believe in sunscreens early on. So remember when you're young, uh, mum or dad teaches you how to brush your teeth twice a day. You form a habit and you don't forget that, yeah? Well, you shouldn't. So same thing goes with sunscreen. If you actually apply it twice a day, start when you're about four or five years old. That's brilliant because you've started active skincare at a very early age. So, and it's never too late. Uh, people come in to me from the ages of 20 all the way up to 90. So even when you're 70, 80, 90 years of age, skin rejuvenation can still be a reality. And it's never too late to start with skincare, your basic 
sunscreens, and then you add your vitamin A, B, and Cs. For more information about A, Bs, and Cs of skincare, I've done at least, a, I think it's a 15 minute video, so you can click up here for more info. What is the best way to avoid wrinkles? Party question, yes, get that all the time. <laughs> One, two, and three, sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. The best sunscreen to use is the one that you're actually gonna use. So whether it be SPF 30 or SPF 50, just get it on. If you can get it on twice a day, start when you're young, it can actually reduce wrinkles. But there are many other ways I use to actually reduce wrinkles, including Botox. Botox is great for dynamic wrinkles, so wrinkles at, with movement. Uh, micro Botox is great for small, I guess, very fine wrinkles as well, in the correct setting yeah and then there are laser treatments so laser treatments include things like um, clear and brilliant so if you're looking at gentle lasers clear and brilliant you're looking at pico lasers you're looking at q switch lasers and then for really deep etched um, wrinkles i go for the fully ablated uh, lasers which include the erbium and also the co2 they give great results but once again you've got to use those lasers with caution in the correct skin type so when you talk about skincare what skincare can you use so we've also talked about vitamin A. I keep going on about vitamin A because that's the one that actually works, yeah? So whether it be over-the-counter retinoids or medically prescribed retinoids, so that's the first thing, vitamin A, and then certainly other chemicals. So when we're looking at chemicals, we're looking at things like chemical peels, alpha hydroxy acids. So that can be glycolic acid peels, or you can buy yourself glycolic acid, which you use at home. So something like Neostrata, Start with a 10, go up to a 15, add some vitamin A, take some before and after pictures, yeah? standardized pictures before, and look at your skin every month. And by using that regime at home, it can help with small, fine wrinkles. Guys, I hope that helps. Uh, that's a very quick uh, FAQ on the most Google skincare questions. There's a lot more on my skincare guide, so I've given you some links for that. There's links below in regards to where you can buy things and um, how you should approach the questions which I've illustrated today. Guys, hope you like that. Please comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, I'll see you next time.